Welcome everybody to Friday's edition of the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Now, all last week, talking about these blood covenants and the actions of people that are recorded in the book of blood covenants. Now, and I'll, I'll repeat what, what Gloria said. She said that, that uh, Jesus trained these men. He trained them and, uh, and taught them and set them against sickness and disease. Yes. Then he went to the cross and bore it. So let's pick it up there in the book of Acts once more. And um, we can, uh, oh, let's go back here. Uh, in the second chapter, verse 31, he seeing this before spoke of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, come and receive the promise of the Holy Ghost. Then verse 46, they continuing daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily as should be saved. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the ninth hour being 3 p.m. A certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask an alms, Peter fastened his eyes upon him. Now, uh, he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from them. Well, go back to Mark 11, How, or go back. How many times did Jesus go through that beautiful gate? Yes. He walked right through there. He yes. walked right by this man. Are you gonna tell me that, that he's gonna pass by this man and leave him just sit there? No, the reason he was expecting to receive something is because he had received before. That is very obvious, Greg, that here, I mean, that Jesus would say to Jews, come on now, put something in his hand. Put something in his hand. Well, why didn't he raise him up? Well, you'll have to ask him that and you get to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the, the teaching here is that Jesus told them, it is the Father within me, he does the works. The night before he went to the cross, so they knew that. Mm -hmm. So they were depending. Then they got baptized in the Holy Ghost and spoke with tongues and they realized what happened to them and Peter stood up and preached. <laughs> this is that spoken by the prophet Joel. Yeah. So now. This, this is when the last days began. Yes. Right there. Right there. And we're in the last of the last days. Yes. That's right. So now I want you to show you something. And he uh, fastened his eyes on him. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and the ankle bones received strength. He leaping up, stood and walked and entered into the, uh, them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. They knew it was he that said for alms at the beautiful gate. They were filled with wonder and amazement. That was a sign and a wonder. They were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto them. And as the lame man was healed, held Peter and John at the temple, ran together into them to the porch that's called Solomon's, greatly wondering. Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, you men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? as though by our own power of hol or holiness we made this man to walk. Now that, that killed, well, no, when the last apostle died, the apostle didn't do it. He said, not my, my power. Listen, listen with covenant ears. 
what comes next. Verse 13. Yes. The God of Abraham, of Isaac, of yes. Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his yes. son Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to yes. let him go. But you denied the Holy One of and the just. Yes. And desired a murderer. And he, continue to read. That's covenant. His name, through faith in his name, have made this man strong, whom you see and know, yea, the faith which is by him hath this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Now, you have to, uh, you have to continue to read here. We don't take time to do that. But they didn't know what happened. But later, they believed after they heard him preach. Mm -hmm. That's it. Because he preached the word. He took scripture to preach it. And they believed it. Mm -hmm. So now, and you come over here in the fourth chapter. How be it many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. I'm telling you, this thing is growing on leaps and bounds. Well, day one was 3,000. Yeah. So it started, imagine what Lucifer saw. He killed Jesus. They scattered. 3,000 on the day of yes. Pentecost when it was yes. fulfilled. Yes. 3,000 on the first Pentecost was Moses. 3,000 died. Mm. 3,000 were born again mm. on the day of Pentecost when Peter preaches this sermon. There you this have is it. the first sermon of the new covenant. Yes, it is. That we have recorded. And, and I can prove it to you in Acts chapter two. Peter said to them, they, they said, Lord, or they said to him, uh, they were pricked in their heart, verse 37, uh, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Verse 39, yep. for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Remember, Ephesians says, we were strangers and aliens of the covenant. We were far off. This is our grafting in moment. Yes. Now, now they, they had no idea that it would ever, ever be anything but a Jewish church because they had a covenant with God. That was the whole take on all of this. And, um, but and then the 19th verse of the fourth chapter, Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than God you judge. For we cannot speak those, but speak those things which we've seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them and let them go finding nothing about how they should punish them because of the people, for all the men glorified God for that which was done for the man was above 40 years old on whom the miracle of healing was showed. The miracle of healing. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't because he was an apostle. Mm -hmm. It was because of faith in his name. That's it. Now all of this, now, let's go over to the 10th chapter. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band, of the Italian band. This is the centurion. That's right. This is the centurion that built the synagogue in Capernaum. Pilate's headquarters is in Caesarea. Yeah. They've proven it archaeologically. Yes. They found things with his name on it. He is the he's the garrison commander of that area. He was the, the crucifixion centurion that said this man must have been the son of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's this man. So when you go back through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, write his name down there. When it says the centurion, his name is Cornelius. That's his name. He built synagogue. He built Jesus' hometown synagogue, which was in Capernaum. That's right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> A devout man and one that feared God with all his house, 
which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day and an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius, when he had looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, your prayers and your, ma, your, prayers and your offerings have come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodges with Simon a tanner whose house is by the seaside, and he'll tell you what you ought to do. Hmm. Oh, yes. And you know what happened there. He departed and called two of his household servants, a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And I present this to you. That's the one that Jesus spoke and said, go your way, your faith is as you have spoken. Mm. And he said, I've not found such great faith in all That's of Israel. Right. Be it done as you have you said. Two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. I believe the reason the Lord had that put in there is to let us know that this is the only one that he would trust because this is the one that Jesus healed. I mean, it's all in this book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he had declared all these things unto them. He sent them to Joppa and on the morrow and so forth. Heaven opened and so forth. Now, while Peter doubted in himself the vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius, he made an inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. And he called and asked for Simon. Now, all of this, listen, all of this, this is so important. He called for circumcised men mm -hmm. that already had a blood covenant with God. That's right. And now they're preaching on the blood of Jesus and his name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Connect the dots. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and every word they preached, they laid the foundation on scripture. They mm -hmm. didn't have their own opinions in there. They quoted David, they quoted Joel, they quoted mm -hmm. the different prophets. You know, why did he keep quoting David? Why did he keep, because everybody that would approach Jesus with covenant wanting something, they would say, son of David. Yes, sir. And so that's that kingship. They wanted him to establish a throne. Let me show you a verse in Acts chapter 15 real quick that goes to this. Acts 15, verse 15 and 16. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written, after this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and I will build it again with the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. The tabernacle of David has been restored in Acts chapter two. That's what was happening. Yes. And that is where the presence of God was available. David took the Ark of the Covenant out of the tabernacle, and he made a tent for it. And uh, I can take you to Jerusalem where that was. And he, he, it was available for everybody. Everybody praise and worship. Yes. He started praise and yes. worship. And gen, Jew and Gentile alike could see the presence of God. Well, then here in, in uh, Matthew 22, uh, 41, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, what think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? They say unto him, the son of David. That's right. <laughs> so this, this is why he's preaching this. That, well, of course it, it's it is. It's proof, the first sermon is proof he is the covenant. Yes, he mm -hmm. is. And it's that person and, it's, it, and his blood. The whole thing was about him, mm -hmm. which makes the whole thing about us. Amen. Yes. The whole world. Yes. But God so loved the world, he, he gave his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. So this is answered, Acts 10 is answer to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and the other most parts of the earth because Caesarea is past Samaria. They're literally now doing what Jesus told them to do. They're taking it mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. to the world. And from Samaria, or, or Caesarea rather, from Caesarea, Paul will go in a ship and take it to the Greek Isles, yes. to Thessalonica, yes. to Galatia. He'll take it to all those places from that very place. Now, and you, you need to read that whole sermon that Peter preached. Now, and the, the thing here, Peter opened his mouth, verse 34, opened his mouth and said, of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. That came from the vision. But in every nation, he that fears him and worketh righteousness, no, but in the United States, he that fears him and worketh mm-hmm. righteousness is accepted of him. Mm-hmm. In Africa, every nation, every nation. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we have to go back to Babel. Oh, yeah. That's where they were all created. Scattered them all over the face of the earth. Now, now listen. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel Preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word, I say you know, which was published throughout all Judea. Well, certainly he knew it. He was the garrison commander there. He had to be in charge. He heard all that. He heard those sermons. <laughs> he built the synagogue. Jesus healed his servant. And began from Galilee after the baptism with John preached. How? God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all the things he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, how they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly not to the, only to the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he arose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead, mm. to give all the apostles witnesses that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sin. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God and answer Peter, can any any man forbid water. He commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Now, let's get another witness of this. Let's go to the 10th chapter of the book of Romans. Yes. Now, when you know all of that and you understand these words, how Jesus went to hell, paid the price there, it's all written particularly in the, the, um, in, a, in the Amplified, in the 22nd Psalm. Mm-hmm. It begins, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And it ends with, it is finished. Mm-hmm. Now here, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that it might be saved. For I bear them record that have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant, now listen to this wordage, they being ignorant of God's righteousness, going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves under the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Moses describes the righteousness which is the law. Now this, he's, he's talking about the Mosaic covenant now. Yes, sir. That the man which does those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thy heart, who shall ascend to heaven, that is to break Christ down from above. Now listen, listen. Or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ again from the dead. If you look that, who shall into the abyss. So, But what does it say? The word is nigh thee even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes to righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. 
Amen. <laughs> All of these things. Now, I'm going to give you an assignment. There is only 13 chapters in the book of Hebrews. But now when you get over here from the fifth chapter and you hear this, again to the sixth. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ. Now listen, here's the principle doctrine, the principle teachings. These are very sacred. And people just, mm -hmm. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection or maturity. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, faith towards God, the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. So, so number those and go down and you see laying on of hands right in the middle. Now there are people that lay hands on people for certain ordinations and so forth just because it's a tradition. But he's talking about the laying on of hands for people to be healed. That's right. The laying on of hands to separate people That's unto right. a ministry and a calling. That's right. And expect power to, to come. Hallelujah. Yeah. All of these have to do with this blood covenant. And then you begin to see, oh my, in the, in the sixth, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation or inner strength who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is before us. Which hope we have as an anchor to the soul, both sure and steadfast, which enters into that within the veil. Where, where, whether the forerunner is entered, even Jesus made a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. This is our present truth. This is the doctrines yes. of the church. So we got a new high priest. Yes, sir. So if we have a new high priest, we need a new covenant. I can't have the priest of Aaron anymore, of Moses. Mm -hmm. I have a new priest. Now let's deal here. There's been some discussion here lately about tithing. That this is, well, it's, you know, it's just in the law and the prophets. Well, now, uh, Micah, mm -hmm. the last prophet recorded I mean Malachi, prophet. That's where the tithing scriptures are. Mm -hmm. No, they're all the way into Deuteronomy and so forth. But let me read this. Here men that die receive tithes, but there he, Jesus, receives them of whom it is witnessed that he lives. One translation said that he lives forever. He is my high priest. And I take my tithe before him. He's, he's my new priesthood. I have a new covenant. I'm not under that law anymore, but I'm under this covenant now. And there it is. There it is right, right there. Right there in that covenant. For he testifies thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Amen. Forever. And we're out of time. And I want to remind you that this book of Hebrews explains everything that we have talked about Oh, it was necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with thee that the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices. The blood of Jesus. It's all there. Oh, and when you get through, when you get through doing that, your book of Hebrews will look like that. <laughs> I didn't do all that at one time. A lot of it was at one time because I just read through it. Praise God. We'll be back in a few moments. Praise the Lord. Hello, I'm Larry Warren. Jesus said in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him would not perish, 
but have everlasting life. God knew that in order to get a family, he would have to sow a seed, and that seed was Jesus. He sowed a member of his family so he could receive many children into his family, and he is still receiving a harvest of children into his family. That principle of sowing and reaping to reach the lost still works today. In Philippians chapter 4, Paul explained that giving or investing into the work of God's kingdom enable ministers to spread the gospel more effectively. God never forgets the seed you invest toward the work of his kingdom. He is so thankful to you for partnering with him and reaching those that are lost and need the saving power of Jesus. In return, he has promised you in Philippians 4.19 that he shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God is faithful to his word. He will make sure you reap a bountiful harvest for the seed you've sown. If you would like to partner with God to reach the loss with the compassion of Jesus, I encourage you to pray about investing your seed into Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Partners and friends, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland are thankful for every seed you invest into this ministry. We greatly value every offering we receive. We pray over it. We put it to work spreading the good news of God's kingdom. And together with you, we're changing lives with the truth of the uncompromised word of God on every available voice. Let me pray over your offering and let's thank God for your abundant harvest. Father, thank you for serving us with seed to sow. As you served us with bread for our food and you're multiplying every seed we sow, increasing our fruits of righteousness, enriching us in everything to all bountifulness. And we thank you for it. Amen. I am so glad that you could be with us for these two weeks. Go back kcm.org and so forth and pick up on all the things that you've missed because it's, it's very important. They, these have to do with your salvation and these have to do with your knowledge of who you are in him and who he is in us. Hallelujah. Well, until the next time we get together, this is Kenneth Copeland, Professor Greg Stevens, and all of the class reminding you again just how much God loves you. He loved you so much, he gave his only begotten son that faith in him you would not perish but have everlasting life. We'll see you next time. God loves you and we love you. And Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. Glory Amen. to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland would like to thank you for sowing into Kenneth Copeland Ministries. To text to give, Text the letters KCM to 36609. Together with you, we are sending the word of faith to families around the world.